Um, so the topic today is an efficient conversion between structure of arrays and arrays of structures. Uh, why this topic? Because often when optimizing some heavy loaded code, uh, we need probably to use CMDs and stuff and uh, maybe different data interpretations uh, for efficient conversion. So uh, this problem was uh, originally generated in our project uh, for several places. One of them was bound box uh, calculation of some regions. And I decided to share knowledge with all of you guys. So probably you can also use it in some of your project places and stuff, or maybe some ideas that you will take from here. Uh, so what is an array of structures? Uh, basically, you can see here uh, some kind of segment that we have uh, in our project, basically to interpret some kind of uh, like uh, set pixels of some image uh, or some region, how, how we call it. So basically, we have a row. Uh, we have call starts and call stops. And this interpretation uh, is being used, for example, um, like defining some kind of regions or field pixels or something. So if you look at the memory, we can uh, see that all of the elements are aligned as so. So we have segment, 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 one by one. Um, so if we uh, are accessing structure components concurrently, then this um, basically makes sense um, because if we access, for example, each time rows and call starts, call stops, um, the elements will be most probably in the same cache line. So that um, that in terms of speed is great. But uh, if you, for example, want to calculate some kind of uh, know what is the topmost row or bottommost row or something like that, then the arrays of structures, uh, structure of arrays would prove more useful. Because uh, for separate for separate processing, for example, we want to have these guys in one cache line, these guys in other cache lines. So we want to process one, one by one, basically. If I only just want to process rows, I only want uh, those here like uh, x values to be included. I don't need uh, access uh, these and on y's values basically. Um, so yeah, so the, the problem origin is here and uh, the problem is data requirements and data usages. So uh, how, uh, if comparing structure of arrays and arrays of structures, we can see that Arrow structures uh, tends to be more readable to the programmer as we have like these separate objects. Uh, so it's more understandable from the concept of object oriented programming. And also if, well, as I said before, we have better cache locality if uh, all of the members of the structures are accessed together. Basically, if we, not, uh, if we need all of the information from one segment, as I described previously, the array of structures would be efficient, but uh, if we uh, like need to vectorize some stuff, uh, the structure of arrays, the uh, the structure of arrays proves more efficient in many of cases, and also uh, structure of arrays uh, can use less memory because um, possible paddings um, won't be there only between the arrays in the structure itself. So when we interpret these uh, array of structures, um, at this segment, for example, yeah. Uh, if we have uh, different data inside of it, not just in 16s like here, um, we can um, see if, uh, if you look at the memory of such a vector of segments or some of the other structures, uh, there can be possible padding inside of here because of different data types that can be used inside. Uh, so um, the memory layout is not like straightforward can be not straightforward like this, but we have can have some of the paddings inserted inside of each of the segments of, of inside of uh, each of these structure elements. Basically, in our case, it won't be here because we have consistent in 16s, and yeah, it's easier. But uh, yeah, note note that it can be there. Uh, so 
if you talk about basic scalar conversions, it can look like this. So basically have our vector of segments and we want to get our three vectors of uh, separate rows, call starts, call stops. Uh, and it can be achieved easily by iterating with for loop and just um, copying one by one elements. And the same uh, when we're converting our structure of arrays, rows, columns, uh, start stops to vector of segments, we can basically do the same. Um, yeah, so basically it's a scalar version of all of these conversions. And let's see what we can do with Cindy's. So uh, structure of arrays vectorization is trivial. And uh, in many cases, uh, the compiler can vectorize uh, our uh, like simple operations by itself. Uh, and also the, uh, the race of structures, uh, if we have it, the SIMD, SIMD fine of it is explicit and we need to like think of the algorithm and stuff. And it's not that trivial. And we have to do some permutations and allocations so and hold some buffers, so it's not that easy. Uh, yeah, so the original idea is to uh, somehow first uh, do a first conversion from the array of structures to structure of arrays via SIMDs. And, and thankfully, it's easy to do because um, the code required to do so is not that great, but uh, I'll share with you anyways. So basically what we have here is our segment and we want to get something like this, segments SOA, how we called it. So we can process basically like eight elements at a time. So the general idea is to reach three lines at a time because we have three elements, so we can mix them efficiently. Uh, the first lane would hold uh, these elements, second lane and third lane. So all of the three lanes hold from x, x0, y0, z0 to x7, y7, z7. Basically, we will process eight elements at a time with this kind of uh, conversion. So uh, after reading all of the lanes, um, then we can collect all of the rows, columns, uh, starts and stops. So what we do is simply, like I commented here, take all of the axes, and see what we want to do with them. Ah, okay, so we first want to uh, blend uh, the lane two into the lane one. So it would become like this. And then we want to blend lane three into lane one also with the resulting uh, rows. So it becomes like this. And it's it can be done via these two lines of code, simple and fast. And yeah, same with columns. First we blend uh, two, first and second, and then we blend it with the third one. So basically the same algorithm and the same one with these Zs. And yeah, and then we uh, can efficiently store them inside of our pointer row, uh, or something, a pointer array or something like that. Uh, yeah. Also, if that was SSC, uh, two or four or something like that. And if, if you're talking about AVX, um, the results are practically the same because, um, why? Because we need, uh, the initial read would be the same, but we need much more elements. And also um, we, for each of these, like collecting and blending, we will need not just two operation of blending, but several permutes and permutes are expensive. So even if you read 16 elements of this relains, uh, the, these permutes and one more blends, um, like uh, make this stuff more expensive and thus uh, it's more efficient to use SSE. Also, uh, if using SSE, we can, um, do the uh, sorting of these resulting elements more efficiently uh, because this requires also just three rows of code to sort of them because if not sort uh, we are ending with stuff like this z5 z uh, this z2 z5 z0 and stuff so we need to rearrange them also and doing it in the avx2 is hard and require much more computations than in the ssc basically yeah, so um, 
this stuff like shuffling uh, and set R can achieve can, can give us uh, easy sorting. So I demonstrated how to do it, for example, when we are converting from SOA to SOS, AOS. Um, and here we can see that we have this uniform, uh, for example, items, and we need to convert them back to the original uh, layout. So we will have x0, y0, z0, x1, y1, z1, uh, same as we had uh, when we were converting from the array of structure to structure of arrays, basically. So it's a vice versa process. And uh, here we can see how we can shuffle all of the elements via SSE instructions relatively easily. Because as we, if we talk about AVX2 instructions, um, the shuffling is not that easy because um, uh, the Intel treats uh, both of the 128 bit lanes separately. So we cannot like uh, do bit shifts in for all of the 256 bits and, and stuff. So we, we, we need to operate with two lanes separately and it uh, like makes the algorithm um, more slow with this one. So uh, from like a uh, pragmatic point of view and we are some testing and benchmarking the SSC proved faster in both cases. Uh, so yeah, so we shuffled our elements and we, then we do the same stuff for back conversion. So we want to make this beautiful like segment like uh, structures and we basically do the same blending as we did before for all of the three lanes. And then we just store all this stuff inside of our segments vector. Uh, yeah, basically that's all of the hard, <laughs> not that hard part, yeah. <laughs> so if we uh, look our, at our benchmarks, we can see that uh, our scalar version took something near, somewhere near uh, nine, uh, milliseconds and uh, our uh, CMD uh, versions are like seven times faster or something. But I also decided to experiment with uint8 uh, element types. So we uh, can process 16 elements at a time, not just eight via SSC. So in this case, when we're processing uint8, we can see like uh, more than 10 times speed up in overall um, benchmarks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right now, also, I want to share um, just a second. Uh, I want to share my code and, uh, okay, just a second. Stop share. I will reshare my Visual Studio. Okay. Share. Great. Uh, so, how does it look? So, basically, we have our segments and segment structures. Uh, we also can define our uh, CMD order. So uh, if we want our elements to be sorted, we can basically do all of this stuff uh, at the end of our blending. Uh, so also we have our SOA to AOS with the same uh, logic how I described it earlier. And we can also look at the, um, for example, how we can process you in eight elements. So we have first lanes and third and second and third lanes. And basically we do the same blend. Only this set R would be like this, not just two by two elements. We need to set all of the 16 elements uh, mask to blend it correctly. And yeah, so we achieve pr practically the same stuff and then shuffle is also the same, but just our set R is much more greater. And yeah, uh, basically uh, that's it. I want just to launch my benchmarks and I probably should share my all my screen, not just that stuff. Screen one, okay. Uh, screen to share. All right, so let us let us try doing our benchmarks with these uint eight uh, data types. How I'm how I'm benchmarking this is 
uh, doing like I have an array of 600 elements. Um, I call it full size. And basically I'm initializing something with random values, some pixels. And uh, then I'm, what I'm doing is basically converting between all of this stuff. Uh, here in the main method, I just check whether these conversions are So the, the comparisons of uh, the tests that converting back and forth passed correctly. And now we can look at the results. So um, when you're converting in 16s, we have like nine milliseconds to convert 6,000 elements. And if we are talking about CMD versions, it should be like eight times faster. Um, we used this stuff in our project. So basically uh, we had, ah, let's one, one point seven. Uh, we have sped up bound box calculations for like seven times or so. And another cool stuff is that when using uh, this method directly, we can use these SIMD vectors if needed for any calculation. So we, right now I'm like, storing it inside of some of arrays, but we can, for example, calculate something directly here because we have this uh, already inside of the SMD registers and it's cool. Uh, so yeah, as for our test, so backward calculation took like 9.2 and just SMD one left, calculate. And yeah, 1.69. All right, um, that's pretty it that I wanted to talk about. Um, so yeah, basically question time, if anyone wants some questions.